So I just came across this article from Electric about a brand new fat tire electric mountain bike. And I'm super excited for this product. You guys might know that my very first e-bike was a self-converted electric mountain bike. It was the Mongoose Ledge X1 from Walmart. And I combined that with the NB Power 2000 watt conversion kit. And it came together to form a really awesome bike. Mountain bikes are usually full suspension. They're very athletic. You can take them on and off road and they just make for awesome electric bikes. And I really have no idea why in the e-bike space, the retro vintage moped is what kind of dominates. When it comes to my electric bike, I want it to be sleek, modern, full suspension. It can go off-road, not replicating a gas bike from 50 years ago. So that's why today we're going to be taking a deep dive into this new, very promising electric mountain bike. And I also want to compare it against a few other e-bikes in the market that are in a similar category. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you do, we always appreciate a like, subscribe, and let's do this. Okay, so let's begin with the company itself. Frey is a Chinese company, but they've been around for quite a while and they make some very high quality bikes. All of the components of this bike are name brand. So Shimano, things like that. The unfortunate side effect of that is it makes the bike quite expensive. So it's currently around $4,500. Some of the key specs is that this uses full suspension and it's air suspension. Along with that, we have fat tires. These are 26 by four inch wide fat tires. And on top of being great for off-roading, a big reason why I love fat tires is because they add extra comfort. It's like another layer of suspension for the bike. And the beating heart of this system is the Bafang M620 mid-drive motor with a peak power of 1500 watts and a max torque of 160 newton meters. So on the surface, I gotta say the new Frey CC fat tire bike is a little expensive, $4,500, but it seems to have it all. It's full suspension, fat tires, a powerful mid-drive motor, and it looks very sleek and modern. I mean, honestly, what's not to like here? But to put this into better perspective, let's compare the bike against the Super 73, which is one of the few existing e-bikes in the market that doesn't use that vintage moped design, as well as comparing it against the Suron, because the price tag between the two is almost identical. And the Suron is kind of a mixture between an electric mountain bike and a dirt bike. So there's actually quite a bit of similarities between the two. So getting right into this, the Frey and the Suron are both about $4,500. And the Super 73 is a little bit cheaper at $3,700. The biggest difference here is that both the Frey and the Suron use powerful mid-drive motors and the Super 73 is a hub motor. So right there, if you wanna do a lot of heavy off-roading, the Frey and the Suron due to that mid-drive motor it's gonna be significantly better for that application. Now the Super 73 and the Frey both have fat tires and you guys know my stance on that, but the Suron has skinny tires. To give you exact details, they use 19 by just 1.4 inch wide tires. And this is something I've always uh, not liked about the Suron. All three of these bikes use a full suspension geometry and they also all have four piston hydraulic disc brakes. The Super 73 and the Frey CC both have pedals making these street legal bikes and the Suron has pegs. Also the Frey bike is the only one that's going to give you actual gears in the back. So we can see in this image right here that the Frey bike has, it looks to be a nine speed cassette in the back along with a derailleur. So this is really going to allow you to maximize the utility of that mid-drive motor and neither the Super 73 or the Suron have anything like this. Now that finally brings us to the motor power and battery size of these bikes. So the Frey is a little bit disappointing here for the first time. It's only 1500 watts with a battery that's 48 volts, 21 amp hours. That's pretty similar to the Super 73, which is 1200 watts peak and a battery that's 48 volts, 20 amp hours. Although do keep in mind that a hub motor and a mid-drive motor, even if they have a similar power rating, it's gonna give you a dramatically different um, ability and feel. But the Suron is the clear winner here with a peak power of 6,000 watts and a battery that's 60 volts, 38 amp hours. So that's a quick breakdown of these three bikes. If you want my opinion here, I think the Frey CC improves upon the Super 73 in a lot of ways. So it keeps features I like, including the fat tires, the full suspension, the general aesthetic, but it gives you gears and a much improved, in my opinion, mid-drive motor. And that brings the Frey CC a lot closer in capabilities to the very popular Suron. The Suron has a ton more raw power and a bigger battery, 
but the fray does give you pedals, gears, and fat tires. Oh, yeah, and I didn't write it down, but the fray and the Super 73 both weigh around 75 pounds, and the Suron, mostly due to its bigger battery motor, is heavier at 120 pounds. So, yeah, when I came across this article of this brand new fat tire electric mountain bike, it reminded me a lot of my very first e-bike build and how much I really enjoyed that. And would you guys agree with me that electric mountain bikes are just better platforms than the very popular uh, vintage mopeds that we have today? And I am working on a video of the best overall e-bikes for 2023, so I will be using that feedback in the creation of that video. But that's gonna do it for this one. If you guys enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.